guest today is, uh, needs really no introduction. He's a good friend to the show. He is a now an Olympia qualified athlete who will be competing on the Olympia stage in less than a month from now. The man I'm talking about is Sergio Oliva Jr. What's up? What's up, guys? What's up? Where's, I thought I was going to see a victory shirt on you. <laughs> I figure everybody hates me anyway. I might as well just go ahead and out myself. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say on your shirt, actually? It's, it's like the, the friends, but it's fiends. Oh. And I, is there a hidden message there for the other people out there in, in, in the bodybuilding world? That's what they said about Phil's shirt at the Olympia last year, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> you know, you had a, a, a good season, you qualified for the Olympia, but it was frustrating for you because I know you were looking for a pro win. Uh, you play second at the Chicago Pro in your hometown there. Uh, that was, I know, a disappointing loss for you. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, you know, going to my hometown, of course, and losing was, was a big deal, but um, I think it was more losing to Lockett that was actually the, the bigger loss than actually yeah. losing uh, in Chicago. You know, losing to someone that I feel like I could have beat was, was a lot rougher. And, and a lot of things that people don't know about me is I never really, like, promote shows. I never tell people to come to shows. So it was actually the first time that I actually was, like, promoting the show and wanting people to come. So mm. it was even more harsh to take that loss. But it was just... If, if I had lost to Lockett and I just lost, that would be a bigger deal. Uh, it wouldn't have been a bigger deal than the fact that it was just me messing up my timing and um, that was the harder part to swallow. But that's bodybuilding, you know? You, ha you, have, to, you have to lose and, and that's how you have to learn shit about your body. And that's one thing that I learned is, man, I, I peak better later in the day. And um, right. that's just something I learned at that show and you know, I had to swallow that down and, and deal with that. Uh, the underlining issue. Oh, I, I want to stop you for a minute because you, you made a statement that I, I, I want to capitalize on because I, I have hidden insights into Sergio Oliva Jr. because I obviously talk to Chris Cedar every day. Now, is it true? But this, is, this is something I did as a, as a competitor, so I'm not making fun of you. I'm actually, I'm actually relating to it. Do you sleep really late and go to bed really late at night? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't been to bed before 3 a.m. in my life. <laughs> I, was, I was like that until I had kids, Sergio. Now I have to go to sleep. Now I go to bed late, but I wake up early. I don't sleep anymore, you know. Right, so I'm always getting my ass kicked at prejudging my whole life. Even in New York, I was losing yeah. and after prejudging in New York. Yeah. Uh, but as my body wakes up and it starts to tighten up, uh, I, I do better. But still, that's not an excuse. Uh, you know, I, I still can figure it out like we did in Tampa. I promise you, I didn't go to bed any earlier for Tampa. Right. Um, we just adjusted. And, and, and that's the one thing that people don't realize is that Chris is, me and Chris have only worked together for, you know, now this is our fourth show, but it's really only like two competing years. So this guy's still learning my body. I'm still learning my body. Sure. So. And that, that was the best part about Tampa is that that was proof that exactly you can take uh, a loss, adjust from it, and then, you know, counter. And that was that was the best part about it. But no, the, the hardest part for Chicago was uh, I actually was going through a divorce uh, during that prep. Oh, I didn't know that. No one, I don't yeah, think anyone knows and, that. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm an idiot. Instead of putting my career first in February when Lockett and everyone else has already started their prep, I'm in Australia trying to fix this stupid ass relationship. Oh. So to me, that was the, actually the hardest part is I kept telling myself during that prep is I'm not gonna let this fucking bitch stop me from winning this show. <laughs> and, and you know, I just kept telling myself like, no, you know what? And so to me losing that show, it was actually me letting her uh, fuck that up for me. So that's actually why I was really upset. Well, well what happened? Why, why did you guys break up? Because I thought everything was great. You know, I know she was having uh, visa problems, but uh, what happened? Yeah, I don't, man. You, I don't know, man. You can't, you can't trust these insoles, man. So you, you think with the separation, there was this, there was uh, infidelity going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on in Australia that I had to uh -oh. find out about. Not but it's, good. It's, it's, it's for the better, you know. It all worked out. Uh, I just needed to get that win and, and, you know, tell myself that nothing else matters. No one can stop me from this. So when right. I, when I got that loss, I think that's why it was a big, uh, uh, a loss for me. It had nothing. It really had nothing to do with losing in Chicago. I mean. That, that's what everybody doesn't know is that really, I didn't start my bodybuilding career in Chicago. It sure. was actually Florida. 
Uh, right. My roots, you know, MD was all over the, my roots, my roots. Well, my roots is Florida. I started my first. <laughs> right. You just, you just were born in Chicago. That was it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I did my first nine years of competing in Florida. Sure. Um, you which was really mom. cool. Right. Some of the judges that judged me at my first show as a middleweight were there in Tampa. So that was really cool to see, you know, Peter Potter and a bunch of other judges that, uh, you know, see me a hundred plus pounds less you know, now doing my first pro show. But that was actually the more underlining, and that's what a lot of people that knew me knew what I was going, that I was dealing with, and I just kept wanting to make sure that that didn't affect my career, because I've seen it. I've seen so many pros come and go, and they let other things that have nothing to do with bodybuilding affect their career. Right. And then here I am in Australia in February, March, still trying to focus on this stupid relationship, and I should have been on my diet. You know, I right. should have started it. Yeah. Oh, so that yeah. was my fault. And then the fact that we barely lost, to me, she for sure cost me that shit. So that's okay, you know, I recovered, but uh, <laughs> Chris, Chris said in, in, in your guys' uh, 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 show that I didn't want to do Tampa, that's not true. I just, I just needed a break. Uh, I did tell myself that I was gonna jump out of a plane and if I didn't die, I would do Tampa. Yeah. Uh, so I did, I, I, I obviously was not in the right mental state. But you, did you go? Did you go skydiving? You really did go skydiving, <laughs> Dave. I jumped out of a plane, man. What, uh, where'd you get that? I have, I'm I'm petrified of heights. I don't know where you get the balls to do that. Was that something you always wanted to do? Yeah, you know, to tell you the truth, if I had won Chicago, I wouldn't have done it. You know, because right. me, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna mess up my knee. I'm gonna mess up right. my ankle. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Right. So I, I guess I was in the right mental state to not give a fuck, and I just jumped. And uh, Did, they had, when you, they hold had on. to use one of the, the tank parachutes for me, but it worked. Yeah, that's what I would be afraid of. I'd be like, you know what? I'm pretty heavy. You sure this, this chute is going to work? you like got like a 100-pound you know, woman in front of you, right? What, what, it was a tandem chute, right? Right, yeah. You, I'm watching the footage right now. You were basically lunging... I don't even know how you did it. It's the most incredible footage I've ever seen. You like walked with the person on your back, who's obviously the, the expert parachutist, and you yeah. just jumped out of the plane. You got some set of fucking balls on you. I don't know how you did it. You didn't even look scared. Yeah, I think that sums up where I was mentally after Chicago. That's right, so you didn't care. You didn't care if you would have died. It would have been fine. Yeah, I was, I was on that level for sure. Wow. But it worked, you know, and I landed and I'm like, we're doing Tampa. But, <laughs> now, uh, is, is there a weight restriction? Were, were they worried yeah, about Yeah, I was that? 25 pounds over. And they still let you go? Yeah, actually it was a buddy of mine. I used to train him when I was in Chicago. And it's crazy, you know, I'm, I'm sitting, that was the worst part about Chicago is that I did a victory booth. So normally, you know, I can, you know, I'm not normally, I've never lost before, but right. you know, you lose, you just want to take off, go back to your room, right. you know, be with your family. I had to go sit back at that booth, you know, because it was the right thing to do. Right. I, was, I was so miserable, Dave, that was rough. <laughs> You know, and here I am just like falling apart and I'm just having to shake hands and kiss babies. And then my buddy walks up and he's just blatantly like, what do you weigh? Because I've always told him that I wanted to jump, but I'm over the weight limit. And now he's like some jump master and, and he figured it out where if they use this tank parachute, <laughs> I, can, I can jump. So and it's I actually a parachute you throw a tank out of a, out of a vehicle with, right? Yeah, exactly. So I'm sitting at the booth. He's like, what do you weigh? I told him what I weighed. And he's like, you want to jump? And it was like, I looked up at him. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. And that was it. And, and it took the pain away from the loss, huh? Uh, it distracted me. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, but no, I, I, uh, I just had to get on the Olympia stage. And, and the fact that I knew that I had one more chance to do it. But the problem was that it wasn't a different show. It was going to be identically the same as Chicago. Right. A right. night show starting at four o'clock in the right. afternoon, which was still an issue. So I was still debating on like, can I even get my body? Well, in what time, time do you normally sleep to, Sergio, during the day? Uh, um, I'll get up, I'll get up around like 11, 30, 12. Okay, which means you really get up at one o'clock. That I used to tell the, <laughs> I used to tell people the same thing because I was embarrassed to say that I would sleep till one o'clock, but I would. <laughs> I'm yeah, right. no, I'll get I'll get up around that time because I have cardio, but then I'll take a nap right after yeah. or something like that. I, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know, man. You know what? I don't like people. And at, and at, at one, two in the morning, there's nobody alive. I can go to the gym. Oh, no, I nobody. like that, too. I loved it. I can't do it anymore I, because I got kids. But yeah, yeah, I just I hate people. So it's it's, it's the time <laughs> that I can thrive. <laughs> now. <laughs> Chris said that you uh, th th this whole story is so crazy because 
you, you had an e a week of eating binging, and you, you gained a lot of weight. How, how much weight did you actually gain from the show? Yeah, it was about 28 pounds. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was bad. And I would, I would, I would squeeze my ankles, and my <laughs> and my handprint would be stuck in there. Yeah, I Kate, literally looked like the nutty professor switching over to being fat. <laughs> you, you actually had, you had, you had congestive heart failure. Essentially, is what you had. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, for sure. <laughs> so you, you decide, all right, I'm going to do Tampa. Now you decided you were going to fly down, and and train at Ben Pakulski's gym with him, right? What when, two weeks before? Man, you know what? I went back to California for like a few days, and yeah. I just could not train. I could not start another prep. For the people that did watch, you know, I, I, I documented my whole prep for Chicago. Yeah. And I was just on the stairs two hours a day. I trained twice a day. So I was going to the gym four times a day every wow. day. And, uh, and I for sure probably was overtraining. But when I got back to California, I just could not get it going. Like I, yeah. the building made me sick. The people made me sick. <laughs> um, so if, if I was going to do it, I needed to get the fuck out of California right. and go somewhere where no one could see me. I got off social media. Yeah. No one knew where I was. And I don't know why I liked it a lot. You know, you know, you know what's the biggest difference with Chicago of any other show besides, you know, the time that the night show started and stuff like that. This is the first show people are like, you're going to win. Right. Sergio's going to win. Do this, blah, blah, blah. And I actually realized I don't like that shit. I don't like people supporting. Oh, me. you don't want to like be that. You like to be the underdog, in other words. Not even so much the underdog. I just love when people are like, you're never going to win. You know, and I'm like, oh, OK, then let me go do New York and show you how I win. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a cynical fuck. Right. And I, I like it better that way. So I think going to Chicago, there was all that pressure that I had to live up to this and do this. So when I kind of got off, you know, the, the, the radar, right. I started training better. I was eating better. I was able to relax yeah. a lot better. My cortisol levels were definitely a lot better. Sure. Um, so even when I got to Tampa, uh, I never really trained with Ben. I, dra I trained with him like twice in the whole time right. I was here, um, which was really cool. You know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but I just still, I still like training by myself. I, the, the thing that really got me, though, is that Ben called up Chris Cecito and told him, this fucking guy is never going to be in shape. He looks terrible. Well, that's because the first few times I'm standing there, I'm standing next to Derek and this fucking goddamn prodigy. No one could stand next to him. <laughs> Derek Lunsford, I was not yeah. that bad. I was not that bad. Uh, but standing every time I posed, I yeah. posed next to Derek. Uh, so, of course, I look like dog shit. So, no, so, ben, so Ben's telling Chris, and Chris is like, don't worry about it. We'll get him in shape. And, and, and Ben's like, I, I don't even want to be involved in this because now Ben's thinking he's going to be blamed for you not being in shape, even though it was, you know, it was basically you were just holding a ton of water. At what point did all of a sudden everything start to click and you realize, you know, it's going to happen, you know? Um, yeah, probably the weekend before, about a week out. Okay. I, I, I looked at Chris and I was like, man, you know what? I... I wanted to do this just be, you know what, Dave, I wouldn't have been able to forgive myself for a whole year if I didn't do Tampa. Sure. And that's really the main reason why I did it. I wasn't going to be able to swallow that for a whole year. Right. So I was going to do it anyway. But I think a week out, I was like, man, I think we can actually win this. I didn't want to look up the points. Uh, you can ask anyone I know. Anyone, I told them, don't look up the points. Right. I felt like it was bad juju. If you look it up, then I'm <laughs> yeah. for sure asking for it. Sure. So I didn't even know that I was going to go to the Olympia until the night show. Oh, um, okay. So I even looked at Romero on stage and I told him that no matter what, you know, we're both going. So that was really cool. And I think that's what actually made us both so adamant on stage. And we really were just having a good time. But yeah, about a week out from the show is when I was like, man, Chris, I think we might be able to pull this out. And Chris, Chris was just walking around. I swear it was like the uh, men's warehouse. He just kept saying, <laughs> you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. And that's all we just kept making yeah. fun of him. Well, Chris was sending me the men's warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, Chris was sending me pictures and I, and I knew you look good. So I'm like, wow, he's going to, I don't think anyone's going to beat him there. Now what happened? You get to Tampa and I heard, you know, I'm not going to mention any names who told me, but I heard you were causing trouble behind you missed the competitors meeting. What, what, what was going on in Tampa before the show started? Um, so what happened was is first initially I had sent in my contract stuff for the booth for victory. Right. And I and I thought my my sister, my friend, had sent in my contract with that. Right. So when I only got questions back about the victory booth, which obviously that would be something that only the promoter cares about. Right. Um, I thought everything was 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 fine. And I just realized at the last minute my contract wasn't sent in. So oh. so my business partner was running the booth 
uh, there at the show. So I messaged him and I said, hey, I'm going to email you my contract so they can just, he can give it to him in person. Uh, uh, in, you know, in person. And I don't know how this guy messed it up, but he, but he did. And uh, he never gave the contract to Tim. Oh. Um, so I like woke up one day and Tim's like, where's your contract? I lost it. I like flipped out. I had no idea what was going on. So I had to rush over there and get that done. But then, of course, the day before the meeting, I got crazy sick. And I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, I had already started getting a little bit of flu symptoms about a week out. And even Chris had told me to take the day off at the gym because I can tell my throat started getting a little sore. And I started having yeah. a little bit of fever. And you know what I told myself? I, I knew it was going to happen. As much as I, the toll I was putting on my body, I knew it was going to happen. But then now here I am, the day of the meeting, and I'm sick, I'm throwing up, I have diarrhea. So I messaged Tim, and I'm like, man, I am like severely sick, and I feel like if I come there, I'm going to get other people sick. And it's just going to be, you know, with everything that's going on in the sport, I felt like it was going to be a bad look, too, with, you know, now another bodybuilder walking around looking like he's sick and he's dying, and another yeah. person to bash us about how unhealthy the sport is. So I asked him if I could miss the meeting and just turn in my stuff later, and he said, yeah. Huh. But apparently that message wasn't delivered to the judges. Ah. I, don't, I don't know how. I don't know how. So now here I am saying he said, he's saying she said, and of course now I look like the bad guy. But I was just, I was just sick and I missed the, missed the meeting. Right. That's all it was. Right. Now, here's the question. Controversial, very close decision. Let's face it, between Alexis Rolone and you, uh, some people thought you deserved to get it. Some people thought he deserved. Some people said it was so close it was hard to tell. Do you think this little controversy b before the show had any bearing on on the fact that you didn't get the nod here in uh, Tampa? Um, I think I think the fact that, like Chris said, when that judge came up to us and said it was eight judges to seven judges, I, I have to think it did. Um, right. Because even if one even if one person got pissed off, that's enough to, to sway the decision, obviously. And you know what? That's okay. You know what? That's my I learned my lesson because if anything, I've heard even worse stories about Cedric being a few minutes. Yeah, I was gonna late. say, you're lucky you didn't get disqualified if Lee Thompson right, was exactly. there. Exactly. I, I know too much about this sport to not appreciate that they even <laughs> let me compete. I could have walked in five minutes late and Lee Thompson could have been like, No, man, you're not doing the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially so, given, I, especially okay. since you didn't turn your contract in either, you know. <laughs> right. So uh, I would imagine it did. And then, and then throw on top of it, God, Alexis couldn't have been the, the, the better story. He was the best story of the night. Yeah. You know, Puerto Rico, man, they, sure. Southwest flew like half of San Juan into the show. <laughs> it was so loud. But you know what? This guy, I saw him. Uh, I saw him two years ago. And this guy, I thought he was done. Yeah. I thought he would never lift a weight again in his life, and then he made this huge comeback. So good for him. He almost did something similar to what I did in New York, where he just went yeah. full out, all out, and you know what? He deserved it, and I'm and I'm glad. But I think the difference between me, you know, and I always preach this all the time with these young kids, they don't understand the difference between what's a real loss and what's a what's a real win. You can right. win a show and you still lost. I understand. You know, you can lose a show and I still won. And I feel like. Losing to Lockett because my timing was off and I lost to Lockett, that's a loss. Losing to uh, Alexis is not necessarily a loss. Um, right. He's still the best guy I've stood against. Uh, if it was New York, uh, you know, he would have beat De La Rosa. He would have beat all of them too. Right. Um, so I'm just really thankful that I was able to actually just um, counter from Chicago. That was the biggest thing because, you know, I've, People look at me like I've only been a pro for two years, but I've been in this sport my whole entire life. And I've seen so many pros where they'll literally will tell them, fix this one area and you'll win a show. And year after year, they look the same, you know, and I just sure. don't get it. Yeah. So the sure. fact that we can change my body still, and we still have control over it. That was the biggest, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think that was the biggest win for both of us. It, it shows that one, we, we, we do get this. Yeah. And, and two, Chris is only learning my body more but the one thing that was different, Chris wasn't in Chicago. So I wanted to make that known that right. uh, that's a big difference for me. I'm, I'm not a pictures guy. And if, I have tons of pictures where, you know, Chris is sleeping on my couch and he literally wakes me up. <laughs> he wakes me up every three he hours. He loves that couch. Chris is, loves the couch. He'll sleep on any couch you give him. He really will. Every three hours, every three hours, pose, every three hours. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I do. I, I need my hand held. And yeah. it, that showed, Tampa showed that that's, that's what works. So it was really cool, um, but I I don't want to say I should have won um, because I felt like it could have gone either way. I feel like I won some poses, he won some back right. poses, but I will tell you this. I said no matter what, going into that show, I'm not going to lose back poses. If I right. lost Chicago because of back double by and back lat spread, 
I'm going to lose every other fucking pose but those two. <laughs> I don't care if I came in there with a fucking growth belly. No matter what, I am going to have those two poses to win. And I won those two poses. So yeah. to me, that's a win. I don't right, care. Right. All right. Now, yeah, going in, now, you're going into your first Mr. Olympia competition. It's got to be exciting. It's got to be nostalgic. I mean, because of your dad, you know, being Mr. Olympia. Um, what what like what emotions are, are are you feeling at this point heading into the Olympia weekend? I know we're not right th quite there yet, but you got to have some kind of it's got to feel like something, um, you know that that is almost been your destiny since you were born. Yeah, I mean, I, I already have the record for being the youngest person on the Olympia stage, right? So, uh, you know, you know, what, Dave, I, I'm actually feel really good. I feel like the Olympia is just the icing on the cake. It's just like an added bonus to the year I've already went through, and it's just now I'm just gonna enjoy the festivities of the Olympia. And I mean, trust me, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust my ass. It's gonna be the best I've ever looked in my entire right. life. But um, I don't know. I just the one good thing about uh, living in California is you see all the older guys and they've all verbatim said the same advice to me. It's just enjoy your first Olympia because after that, right. you know, it's, it's go time and you know, there's pressures, you know, no matter what, this is going to be the best I've ever placed. Yeah. No matter what. So going into it, um, I'm, 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 I'm like prepping a different way. Like I, I feel like I'm so excited and so happy rather than like stressed and the pressure. I have, I have no pressure. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Um, but with, Alexis and, and Lockett, I kind of just been using like football analogies. Like they can win regular season games all you want. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, the Giants came and won the Super Bowl against an undefeated team, and that's right. what matters. Right. So as long as I can be both of them uh, at the <laughs> Olympia, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. That's all that matters. Who cares? Who cares about the regular season? I got to tell you, when I look at pictures after shows, and I'm not just saying this, I'm interviewing you. Um, the 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 the, the picture that will stick in my mind indelibly is always one of you if you're in the show. You always have some kind of classic, crazy, most muscular or one of the wacky, you know, poses you do like, you know, like from your dad's era. It, it, that's always seems to be the representative picture of the show that people remember at the end of the day, whether you won or you didn't win. Um, I, I really think that, you know, that you have something unique that you bring excitement wise to the stage, even if you don't win, it's like it makes it more fun for the fans. I, I don't know what it is in, in your soul that enables you to do that, but you seem to connect with the audience. Yeah, I just, I always say that. I feel like I'm the biggest fan of all the pros. When I'm up at that, I'm excited to do the press conference. Yeah. I'm, I'm like so excited to talk, but yeah, out of everyone that's gonna be up there, I will, I'll go toe to toe with with stats of the history and any yeah. other sport, because I know I'm the biggest fan of this, of this sport. <laughs> so I think that's what's translating when I'm up on stage right. is that once the nerves finally go away, uh, actually the fan of this sport who actually gets to now, you know, you know, it's so funny. I don't have to buy an Olympia ticket for the first time. Yeah. You know, like little <laughs> things like that. I'm so excited. I get, I get the jumpsuit for the Olympia, you know, like I'm, I'm so excited about so many little things that I think a lot of pros take for granted yeah. and me, paying for my own tickets to go to these Olympia shows, even since they were in Chicago, yeah. since I was a kid, um, I think that's when I'm on stage and I think the kid comes out of me and the fan comes out and it overtakes actual the actual pro, the competitor itself. Are you looking forward to talking some smack at the press conference? Because I know you, you love to talk smack and get in people's heads and, and argue with people. You, I know they're going to go right to you. Bob Chickarilla will put that mic right in your face and ask you controversial questions. Are you willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys at the Olympia in the press conference? Yeah, do you not know me? Of course. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I just think, I just think that, I think, uh, I think bodybuilding needs it. Uh, you know, boxing does it. I think it's really fun. It's good for the sport. But I do think that there's a thin line between talking shit and attacking people personally. Right, right. Uh, I think your boy Justin doesn't quite have the grasp on that. He doesn't understand... Uh, <laughs> Uh, bringing up my father in his little jokes is, is definitely some personal shit, and right. that's when I take it to another level, and that's why I have to crush him. So what did what did he say? Repeat what he said. What did he say about your dad? Uh, he tells me that I only win stuff because of my dad, um, daddy's boy. You know all these stupid little terms. You know what? He, he can't even speak English. So you don't even know what the hell he's saying half the time. Um, <laughs> but it's fine. You know what? If if you want to like if you want to like attack me, I love it. It's only going to make me a better bodybuilder. And, and I feel like any bodybuilder who doesn't like that, you're not even a real competitor. Right. But once you start talking about some personal stuff, or you start actually now saying that I, I beat you only because. Oh, we lost him. 
I think Sergio got so excited that he that he actually put himself on hold. <laughs> what you what you say? Sorry. I, oh yeah, you broke up for the. Yeah, so you, you were saying about us uh, when he's attacking your dad or saying that you only place well because of your dad. What, what was your response to that? Yeah, it's just how how have I beat you now three times, and it's yeah. only because of my dad. Right. So then my question is, did Max Charles beat you because of my dad? <laughs> Because yeah, none of it makes sense. The and, funny uh, thing is, you don't—you didn't even get along with your dad. So what is he talking about? You know, your I dad know, wasn't man. even liked by the, you know, by the organization because he was a rebel. So it just shows what it shows what everybody yeah. thinks. They don't—they don't know. They don't really know me. They don't really know my relationship. Right. They don't know my upbringing in this sport, and they don't know that I've been doing sure. this on my own. Because anyone who knows me would never even mention anything like that. Because you also know, and you know, Dave. Yeah. They treat me worse because of my dad. My yeah, dad. I, I would. I would say so. Yeah. He, yeah, he burned every bridge he could when he left till the day he died. And on top of it, they're always going to expect more out of me because of my dad. Right. They're not going to they're not going to give me anything. And, and they know that everybody's waiting to, you know, attack them and be like, oh, he only won that because of his dad. They're never going to give it to me. And look, now this is this is now twice where Chicago, you know, it it, it, it probably, you know, was more Lockett than um, than Tampa. Look, if you would have won those two shows this year, no one would have complained. Let's let's put let's lay it on the line. They could have right, given you exactly. those shows. It was close enough. You know? so, so then if I'm only getting stuff because of my dad, right. how come I didn't get Chicago? Exactly. How come one judge didn't make a difference in Tampa? You know, they, it could have, that would have been the time to, okay, he got that because of his dad. Okay, well, now I didn't. Two shows in a row, I couldn't get a few points because of my right. name. So that's proof that it doesn't mean shit. So, mm -hmm. but, but back to talking about shit, you know, talking shit with people. I, I love it. But you'll never hear me talk shit about that first call out. I have no right to say anything to any of those guys because that's a big difference. I, I will go toe to toe with people on my level, the rookies, the up and coming <laughs> bodybuilders. Uh, but, you know, I've even seen a couple of pros mentioning Phil Heath's name and stuff like that. And I just think it's disrespectful. And I just I think some people need to learn their place first uh, before they talk shit. But uh, I next, love it. next year you'll go after Phil Heath, not this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next one, not not this one. But no, but I like it. I I do like it, and I I think there should be as much as Justin sometimes takes it too far. I still respect him because man, you have to have a lot of balls to come at me. Because well, I'm maybe he's trying to get in your head, Sergio, and 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 mess you up. You know. Yeah, well, that's clearly working since New York last year. <laughs> yeah, it's it's clearly working out for him. But uh, I I have to give it to him because. I will destroy you on stage, and I will destroy you intellectually too. So if you're going to come at me, you definitely have some balls because I am not a typical bodybuilder. I could definitely speak well, so I got to give Justin credit because you know what? He made it exciting in Chicago. Yeah. You know, Lockett's you know Lockett's very mellow. You know, he doesn't really he doesn't talk shit and, and stuff like that. But that's one thing that I did want to bring up is that he came after you though, Lockett. On, I saw right, on Instagram. That's, that's what I wanted to talk about. Right. So. That's a proof that social media is fucking bullshit because one person will say, oh, well, Sergio said this. And then before you know it, it's gone around and that it's true. You can go back and look at my posts. Not one time did I ever say I should have won, right. Rocket should have lost. I never attacked anyone, I never blamed lights. I never blamed judge judges. Right. I literally just said, I fucked up. I'm learning now my body, and I'm trying to explain that to people that are maybe up and coming. I've got tons of messages from people saying, oh, my God, I learned a lot from what you said, you know, and now I know my body's not different. Because when you when you do this, you look at other bodybuilders for, you know, uh, advice. But my body's different. My mm -hmm. time clock is different. And there are a lot of night owl bodybuilders out there, and they're like, man, I've always wondered why my body can't peak. I can't get a pump. So when they read my post, it didn't do a lot of good, but unfortunately it did a lot of bad because – there's a lot of people talking shit, and somehow it got to lock it that I said something to him. And these are the two things that made him go off the handle, is I said that I am, I'm, I'm perfectly okay losing to someone who's been a pro several years longer than me. That's okay. Right. And that got twisted around that he's a, he's a pro and he barely beat me, which I don't even know how you twist that up. And then I said that I'm taking the tortoise route which is the tortoise in the hair. I'm taking sure. it slow. Someone said that I called him a turtle. It's like, <laughs> it's like you can't even, I can't make this shit up. <laughs> well, he but, did apologize. He did apologize because exactly, he realized exactly. that he screwed up. Exactly. And after, that's he told he, after he threatened to beat the shit out of you, he did apologize, yeah. That's my whole thing is that I, I don't even care if I win the Olympia ever. I just want to make bodybuilding great again. Yeah. And I feel like pros attacking other pros without talking to each other personally 
is what's going on in this sport. That's 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 men's physique and social media bullshit. That's yeah. private account loser stuff. Pros should be able to write each other and be like, hey man, what's up with this? You yeah. know, and you handle it. And, and if you can't handle it pr privately, then, then go nuts. Right. And guess what happened? I mess or Lockett messaged me through Brandon Curry, uh, Brandon Ray, and guess what? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I, everything was wrong. And he made a post about it. So that's yeah. perfect proof. So, How many times has that happened where people are just misguided and they're actually not even reading posts? They're actually just people want to hate me so bad that as soon as they can find something, they're just <laughs> like, Oh my God, do you hear what he said? Now we can all gang up on him. Actually, find out I didn't say shit after all. <laughs> Well, Sergio, you're, you're always uh, entertaining the troops, so to speak. Uh, you do it up on stage, you do it off stage, and I think you're good for the sport. You can put a lot of adrenaline back into it. You're making it exciting again. Like you said, it's time to make bodybuilding great again because really, I think for so many years, it's been boring, and you certainly infuse our sport with, with new life. So congratulations on the uh, Olympia qualification. Obviously, we're going to see you out in Las Vegas, and I'm sure you'll have a lot more to talk about before we get there. Absolutely. We'll definitely get together before then. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck in your training over the next couple of weeks. And that's going to take us uh, to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. <laughs>